What's going on guys? Welcome back to the 10th and final season of my NHL 24 Calgary Flames franchise mode series. And as always guys, thank you so much for the support on the last episode. If you leave a thumbs up on this one as well, I'd really appreciate it. Also too, it's actually my birthday today. Uh, the big 30, dirty 30, feeling a bit old. You guys can leave a thumbs up on this one, you know, <laughs> maybe lift my spirits. I'd appreciate it. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? We're currently 4-2 there in the preseason. Michael Meese is popping off 13 points in 6 games, averaging over 2 a game. I know it's a preseason, but love seeing that. Also, the San Jose Sharks, they're undefeated 6-0. If you guys missed the last episode, definitely go and check that one out. But as you guys can see there, the Vancouver Canucks won the Stanley Cup. We actually lost to them, I believe, in the second round. The year before that, we won the Stanley Cup. So if you missed episode 8, definitely one I think worth watching. Now, I think also our team is still looking really good. We're trying to get that second Stanley Cup, you know, try to prove ourselves as a bit of a dynasty, probably not full-fledged, but, you know, more than just a one-hit wonder. So, as you can see there, the first line, we got Jack Hughes, Michael Misa, Martone with that plus five. They've been the first line now for the past few seasons. Pelche, Zeri, Eisman on the second line, getting a plus one. Eisman actually did really well last year on the third line, so he's getting a chance playing more minutes. Again, Benak and Irwin on the third line, the plus two. Benak there, honestly, kind of an unsung hero. Fourth line, Hanzik, Hemming, again, they've been shutting it down for us for quite some time. Defensively, we got Paulson coming in on the top pair with Sider, again, a plus five. He's 90 overall defensive defenseman. I mean, 99 shot block, stick check, aggressive in his body, check strength. 6-5, like, dude, just the next Chris Pronger. Second pairing, you got DuPont with Hedberg there. And then bomb pair, you got the captain, Anderson, playing with Lucas Fisher. Finally getting a chance on the NHL. He's been in the AHL for some time. We got him in the second round there, 2024. In terms of goaltending, Andre Nosler starter, Schmid backing him up. You look at the special teams, I think the chemistry is looking good. Plus five for the first unit, all 90 plus, which is awesome to see. So with the chemistry boost, it's like 95 overall power play. Even the second unit there, I think looks solid. Four mans here, of course, is kind of like our best offensive players. PK wise, first unit again gets plus five. Irwin's a beast. Pelchi also with that stick him up X factor. I think overall, we have no negative chemistry on this team. Yeah, no negative chemistry at all. So that's awesome to see. Usually like there's at least something wrong somewhere. In terms of the HL team, obviously, haven't had the greatest, you know, series with them, but I'm hoping we brought in some fresh faces like Canaford, Massey. Um, hopefully, like, you know, those guys can help score defensively. You got Moore, who's 80 overall, leading the way. And, of course, in goal, we got George, who's also an 81. So, really no reason why the AHL team should make the playoffs. I feel like I say that every episode, and they always seem to find a way not to make it. I think they made it twice in nine years, which is just ridiculous. But, in regards to the NHL team here, guys, start the final year. We got 100 offense, 97 defense, 89 goaltending. Team is looking stacked. Let's see how they do here. All right, guys. So it's not in December. We have a record here 19, 15, and 2, which is good for 40 points. Not even in a playoff spot. That would be embarrassing. We won't even get in the last season. Now, we are only, what, like a point or two back. Teams should definitely be doing better than that. Like, on paper, they're stacked. AHL team finally looks good. 14, 8, and 4. Second place there in their division. AHL leading score is Isaac Howard again, 22 and 26. On the NHL team, it's Landon DuPont, the defenseman. He's actually on the second D pair, which I guess somehow he's got more energy now for the power play. I don't know. Averaging over a point per game. All right. So hopefully the team can like, figure it out by the deadline. Because if not, I don't know. And it's kind of funny, guys. The Ducks are offering Philip Broberg to us. Obviously, he was on the team for a bit. Just uh, jumped ship with the St. Louis Blues via offer sheet. They want Banak, though. So definitely saying no to that one. And we're now at the deadline here, guys. Luckily, teams are playing a bit better. We're now 34, 26, and 3. Unfortunately, still not good enough for a playoff spot. We got 71 points there. Three back to the Ducks the final wild card spot and you go and look at like the Atlantic division we'd literally be first place in the Atlantic division 71 points ties with the Sabres are you kidding me like our division is just that good ridiculous hopefully we can get it in that's what she said obviously last year we'll go all out here at the deadline try and push our way AHL team still in a playoff spot there 31 16 and 6 honestly they're killing it the rest of the AHL teams are just absolutely stacked I guess Isaac Howard still our leading scorer and then NHL it's actually Jack Hughes now 60 and 63 so like I said, guys, we'll get to the deadline. Even though we're outside of a playoff spot, we are full-on buyers. Uh, we do have like 2.5 million in cap space. So at 50%, we could bring back like a $5 million dollar player. Carlson's there. James Higgins. You got Mintikov. So the Ducks are selling Carlson and Mintikov, and they're in a playoff spot. I mean, hopefully they do trade them both away. That'll help us get in. Chinikov there. Ryabkin, Lundell, Zelliger as well. Geeky, Eklund, Ekberg. All right. Ekberg makes 5.8. So he's actually a guy we could bring in. Playmaker. Maybe he can upgrade Banak, just have a nasty third line center. Actually, he's a winger. Does he also play center? He does. 62 face offs. I mean, again, like, could go 3C. He's got 99 passing, ton of X factors. Wow, he's actually playing really well. He's at the first line right now, but averaging over a point per game. Taking a look at Banak here, 36 points. Not too, too bad, but I think Eklund definitely is an upgrade. And we got three goalies they're interested in, all medium elites. We don't need all these guys. Might as well add, like, the one with the most value. 
Him and Benak, unfortunately, not going to do it. We also got to bring a guy back. Actually, guys, we got to bring a goalie back. Sorokin there has the least amount of value, but, I mean, honestly, he's making one point. I guess you could bury that. Yeah, for two years, it's whatever. We still have to add more here. We have our first round pick, which actually has a decent amount of value because we could miss. Bet on ourselves there. First rounder, Benak, Festerini for Eckberg, who's 89. What did the Islanders say? Trades accepted. Let's go. All right, so that's a big one. We now have like no cap space. We never know. We can still look around a bit. All right, guys, we're trying to make another trade here with the Pittsburgh Penguins. They got William Moore on the block. He's only making 2 million bucks and he's an absolute beast. 88 overall center, tons of X factors, very good defensively, power forward, also five star physical. Like, he might honestly be a, like a super fourth liner for us, but definitely put him on like the first PK there with Irwin. So I'm trying to offer up Henley there, me and Lee goalie, Reitz, me and Lee prospect. I'm just going all out here in the final year, trying to win that cup. Uh, Mueller's basically just there because you have to have a contract going back the other way. Value's on our side. Let's see what the Penguins say. Trades accepted. All right. So we brought in two like super forwards. Defense could still be better. But again, you look at like the other championship rosters, they seem to have like a nasty top pair and that's about it. We've actually got a nasty top four. So I think like our defense is fine with the kind of weaker bottom pair. Goal tight on Drainov there. Okay, 902, but he's an 87. He's making no money. It'd be really hard, honestly, to upgrade from him. All right, guys, the trade deadline's not complete. I think we made two pretty big moves there, bringing in some star forwards. Looking around the rest of the league, Tolvin there goes to the Lightning. Uh, you got, so let's see, Connolly to the Kings, Sharon Govich there to the Blue Jackets, Maddox Chuck to the Oilers, with the Pedersen, that's the defenseman. Let's see, um, a lot of a lot of names I'm not recognizing. You got Benak, of course, going to the Kings, and our deal, Perot to the Bruins, Kachikov to the Stars, Romanov there to the Golden Knights, Quinton Musty to the Kings, Ridley Gregg there to the Hurricanes, Height to the Devils. Let's see. Our trade for Ekberg. Wait a minute. I said Benak for more, but no, they mixed me up here. As Benak actually got flipped, of course, we got more from the Penguins. That's funny. Okay, so we trade Benak to the Islanders for Ekberg, and I guess they flipped him immediately to the Kings. Interesting. Uh, rest of the names, Chinikov to the Ducks, Mintikov and Arbor Jackeye to the Senators. Wow, okay. Big time trade there to start off the day. Also, I didn't even realize this. Penguins got two first and Stuart Skinner for Matichuk, Pedersen, Jones. Jeez. All right, guys. So after the trade deadline, here's an updated look at the team. First line still intact. Second line, though, is now Eiserman, Zeri, and Ekberg. They look nasty. Third line, you got Pelche, Moore, Aginla. The fourth there is Hemming, Irwin, Aginla. Irwin there in the middle. He'll do fine. He's got 80 face -offs. So, how stacked is that top nine? Like, they're all 80 overall plus. Are you kidding me? Defensively, of course, no changes there. But in terms of the special teams, like, power play one, we haven't changed. Power play two, though, is so dominant now. They get a plus five chem boost. You look at the PK. We got more out there with Irwin. I mean, more four and a half star D, five star physical. Irwin's five and four. I think Pelletier's on the second unit there with Hemming. I mean, our team should be even better now. And again, we still got to get in. I think, you know, those changes we made should help us. Uh, how many points were we back again? Three points back with a game in hand. We got to believe. All right, guys, there's four games left now. We're currently 45, 30, and three. Normally, you'd be well into a playoff spot, 93 points, and we're actually on the outside looking in. We're only one point back, though. Or actually, we're tied with the Blackhawks for the final wildcard spot. So hopefully here we can do it. Sharks, Jets, Kraken, and the Wild. I think if we go three and one, we're looking decent. And we're 2-0 right now. Big win against the Sharks and the Jets there. Okay. And are we in? We actually are in, but again, not over yet. The Kraken in Seattle, 6-3 win. And there we go. We got the X. Let's go. Imagine we miss with like 99 points. And we actually get to play the Seattle Kraken again after beating them 6-3. All right. So what a uh, clutch performance there by the team. AHL team, I think, should also have made the uh, playoffs too. Okay, I accidentally simmed, I guess, a game too far. I must have had like the last one of the regular season. So I mean, 99 points to get the final wildcard spot. What an absolute joke. Now, entire league, the Kraken, 109 points. Tied with Nashville there for the lead league, but they do take President's Trophy based on regulation wins. We're ninth in the NHL and eighth in the West. What? <laughs> the only team in the East? Wait, none of these teams above us. Am, am I missing an Eastern Conference team? Oh, the Devils, my bad. They actually are tied with us. Are you kidding me? So if you just count the tiebreakers a wash, wow. The West is just so dominant there against the East. That is crazy. Like, look at some of these teams. Buffalo, 17, 91. That is ridiculous. Just how much better our conference was. The Sharks, there, 62 points. Dead last. So, unfortunately for them, Rebuild didn't go too well. Uh, Canucks, there, goals for their first place. I don't see us. Goals against here. Let's see. The Preds were the best. We were second best, though. So, uh, we do take that. Take a look here and see how everybody did. Eckberg, he, wow, finished the leading score, 83 and 81. What a trade deadline pickup for us. 
And 24 points, 19 games on our team. He's actually doing even better. I also don't think he had the gold tape to tape when we traded for him. Maybe he did. I'm just totally misremembering. But what an acquisition there at the deadline. DuPont popped off. 76, 82 as a D-man. Jack Hughes, 74. You'd like a bit better from your superstar. Misa, 71. Solid. Eiserman, 70. Yeah, get him second line minutes. 40 goals. That was definitely the way to go. More there, 66. With us, 16 and 19. Playing third line. That's pretty solid. Martone, 64. A little bit better, you'd hope. Zary, 60. But... Wow, what is that? Eight guys on the team, 60 plus points. Aginla playing third line, some power play, pushing 60. That's crazy. Sider, 49 as a D-man. Yeah, overall, Joe Aginla, fourth line, put up 40 points. Jeez, this team is just firing on all cylinders here. Gold tending on Drainov, 905, 295. I'm not going to be winning a Vesna trophy, but also not too bad. George there in the AHL, below 900 for an 81 AHL starter. Very interesting. Zavrigany there had way better stats. It was 78. Now in the AHL, Howard there and Martino, both 55. Cata 52. No one else in the 50s. But I mean, they only do play 69 games. So looking at the entire league, McDavid 122 again. Our Rush Trophy winner, even at 36 years old. Rantanen, Oliver Moore there, Matthews, Hiddle. Uh, this Arnott guy, Joseph, McCarr at 108, Savoy 107, looks like McDavid too, yeah, 67 goals, wins the Maurice Richard. Defensive scoring here, of course, it's McCarr, it's Hughes, Clark actually finishing third, Rajovic there, 89, okay, so there are some new names popping up, goaltending, Herbal there, most wins with 44, save percentage for a starter looks to be a Stebedak, I don't know if I said that right, Askarov there is quite high, still with the Preds, doesn't get traded in this, and then the lowest goals against is a scare off so probably him on Dranov actually had pretty good um Stebenak there only 28 wins so yeah probably I think honestly a scare off might be taking the Vesna trophy and then rookie skaters here you got Fraze 52 Pasquale 42 Dika there 37 geez like the rookie class the last couple years really hasn't been that great also two guys I totally forgot to check AHL team do they finally get in I mean 81 points we're looking good although Tucson's right there oh my goodness if they somehow miss, that'd be embarrassing. But we got to get started here, guys, with the playoffs. Again, we're playing the Seattle Kraken here in the first round. They got that Arnott guy, McCammy, Lekkermacki first lines up to a 90. Jeez. Kako, Beneers, Lakovic, DeVoe there, Helen Noose, Salah, McConnell Barker, Repkoff, Dewar. This Lakovic guy, second round pick 2025. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen him get that good. Defensively, Pretty average. That's why I'm saying we didn't really have to add much on D. This is the President's Trophy winners. They got 385, or sorry, 45s and 82 and 80. Gold tending wise, they got 88 Swayman. Okay, I don't know if you guys have saw. Apparently, Swayman like it paid like nine, ten million bucks, which seems crazy, but he's an elite goaltender. So honestly, I get it. He wants that, you know, Vasilevsky hell buck money. So first two games here, guys, are in a Seattle. He has seven six loss, five four OT loss. I mean, both games were one goal games. We got to at least win one here, of course. Head back home to Calgary. We get a 7-0 loss. That uh, was not a one-goal loss. And a 5-4 win. Okay, no sweep. Chance for greatness. Reverse sweep. Game 5 in Seattle. 5-3 loss. Are you kidding me? All those moves just to get beat in the first round. Come on. Now, one thing here, guys. We should check the AHL team. We actually made the playoffs. Unfortunately, down 2 here to Bakersfield. They finally get in. And they don't get swept. 4-3 OT win. Can they force game five? They cannot. All right. So AHL team, of course, loses the Edmonton AHL team, which was kind of, you know, the trend of this series. But I'm happy we did get our Stanley Cup. We got it in year eight. We tried to get, you know, a couple more year nine, year 10. Unfortunately, it was just not meant to be. And the Carolina Hurricanes guys actually went on to win the Stanley Cup. And Bakersfield there wins the Calder. So we'll take a look at the playoff tree, the awards. Well, too, got to take a look at the record book. Vegas jumps from eight to one. Okay. Nice little bit of uh, luck there for them. So our playoff leading scorer, Jack Hughes, 7-5. Definitely, you know, can't put it on him. We'll take a look and see, I guess, what went wrong against Seattle. Eckberg was over point per game. It was a good pickup. You can see in terms of plus or minus. I mean, we did get beat 7-0 one game. That's probably going to, you know, ruin those guys' stats. On Drainoff, an 8-3-8. I guess the one game he let in 7. Schmidt also didn't let in a goal. Schmidt also had pretty bad numbers once he did come in there. So I don't know. In terms of the playoff tree, Hurricanes here beat the Leafs in five, Sens in five, Flyers in six, and then the Blackhawks there in five games to win the Stanley Cup. Looking at the awards next, of course, Carolina with the Stanley Cup. Not too many Eastern teams won it. Like the fact this year, New Jersey was, I think, the best team in the East. Carolina somehow comes out and wins the Stanley Cup. I guess they only have to play the one team in the West being Chicago, but kind of funny to see you know, how that breaks down. Individual awards there, McDavid, Art Ross Trophy, and the Hearts, absolute domination. McCarr, another James Norris. I think it's like his eighth one. I've lost count. McDavid there, Lady Bing. Frey's got the Calder. 
Herman Sin, Con Smythe, Askarov did get the Vezina as we predicted. Kind of funny, just got traded in real life. Also got the William Jennings. You got Warren there, Bill Masterton, Seattle coach Jack Adams, more Selkie, McDavid, Ted Lindsay, and then also McDavid, Maurice Richard. So he cleaned up. That's why, of course, this series was so tough. Had to face McDavid the entire time. Never left Edmonton. Uh, AHL here. I don't think we got anything. Kempe there. He got the MVP in the AHL. So he's all the way down. Logan Thompson, best goalie. Bo Horvat, MVP of the playoffs. Vasilevsky, we talked about him earlier. Lowest schools against. He's now down in the A2. So pretty funny seeing all that. And like I said, guys, before we do end it here, I want to take a look at the record book as well, too, at our coach. Uh, see his kind of final record with the team. I believe we brought him in year three and we held on to him the entire time since then. So A plus everything for stats. 468 wins, 297 losses. 60.4 win percentage, one Stanley Cup, no Presence trophies. It's actually kind of funny. I feel like it's almost easier to win the Presence trophy in this game than it is the Stanley Cup, and uh, somehow we never were able to do that. Now, in terms of the record book, I feel like maybe we did some stuff. Obviously, Calgary's got a pretty long, you know, storied franchise, but we'll take a look here. So, all-time points. Connor Zary is the current leader on the team, 629. Uh, Anderson catching back in the game in season, 17 to his 19 assists. You got Al McKinnis to beat games played. It is Backlund, actually. That's pretty cool. He played with us, you know, quite a bit there. Mika Kiprasov's goalie numbers. Goals there, of course, still Jerome McGinley with 525. Season records here. Could we set any? Unfortunately, we did not, but currently it was Jack Hughes. He had the most points for us with that 100. Rookie records there. Andreinov, most shutouts with four. Also had the most wins there, 38. So got some goalie rookie records. And then game records, unfortunately, did not set any. But we'll take a look at the entire NHL. So games played, no one knew. Uh, Sergey Bobrovsky, that's a glitch. I don't think he actually played 1450 games there. 400 more than Marc-Andre Fleury, there's no way. Uh, Ovechkin there, crushed uh, Gretzky's goal record. I mean, Matthews is catching him. Even McDavid might. Astronaut 817. Points, you got McDavid second to Gretzky, going to the 2000 club. Crosby there, 1854. Assists, you got McDavid now, number five all-time. Wins, Flurry finished third, Vasilevsky four, Bobrovsky five. No new shutout goalie records. 50 goal season, McDavid most ever with 10. 100 point season, McDavid's tying Gretzky 15, Dreis at 11. Yeah, so I mean, when McDavid's putting up the historic numbers, gonna be going down as the second best player of all time. It's gonna be tough when you're controlling the Calgary Flames in that franchise. But luckily, we did get to win the one Stanley Cup, so I'm still pretty happy. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I might do one more series before NHL 25 comes out. We'll basically, you know, have to see what other kind of videos I'll be doing at that time. I'm not entirely sure. If I don't, I will definitely be doing some, like, retro franchises for you guys uh, in, like, the next month or so. So stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, thank you so much for supporting this series. If you enjoyed it, leave that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.